All right, everybody. Welcome to another great episode of Scott Talk. Today we have John Sullivan of Sully Guitars, and yeah. they are some fast, fantastic guitars, and they're really starting to gain traction among some pretty big names in rock. So, welcome, John. What's up, man? Uh, you know, uh, thank you for having me. Um, today is a, a rare day in that I am not actually sanding, so uh, it's ah. uh, doing. Doing some different stuff today. <laughs> nice. Sort of uh, an administrative kind of day, I think you told me. Yeah, kinda... it's, been, it, it's been that kind of a week. Um, there's various uh, programming and uh, planning and things that I needed to do um, that I, I still haven't completed because, uh, you know, as things, as things tend to be, um, it's been a very fluid week. So uh, it, it turns out that I was able to... Uh, when I was going to be planning, it turns out now I've got about four four guitars or so to try and get completed by the end of the week. So um, mm -hmm. that's, you know, we're just switching gears. It's always, you know, um, it's, it's just that kind of thing. When you run your own business, you're always, uh, you know, you got to be open to moving about. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've noticed because, uh, you know, I started this podcast about a month and a half ago and it's consumed almost every waking minute of my day. It just whether yeah. you know you're actually interviewing, researching, uh, promoting, all kinds of stuff, so I kind of get that little of what you probably go through. You know, I'm. Well, you know, uh, passion projects can be uh, all encompassing, uh, regardless uh, what the actual project is. So, you know, there was a a few years ago, I I was part of a a guitar building podcast. Um, and, uh, it was a weekly thing and I know how all encompassing it can be. Yeah. How was your Christmas? Uh, you know, super low key. Uh, it's, you know, Mrs. Sully and I are empty nesters. So, um, let's see, it was mostly, uh, a bunch of mimosas, a nice nap and, um, not a lot else. Okay. <laughs> it, yeah. it was good. It was nice and quiet. Yeah, same here. Really different, you know. Just didn't have to go anywhere for the like the first mm -hmm. time in forever, which I loved. But uh, sure, you know, just hanging with the family, and you know, it's something you're with the family like every day. So it's just kind of like any other day, really, except for like the, right. the special meals and all that. So, well, today's sure. today's New Year's Eve. So it is. Um, last year on New Year's Eve was the first year in like 15 years I actually waited until midnight and watched the you know the ball drop or whatever it is sure and then look what happened to 2020 right so <laughs> so okay so you've heard it here it is uh you're you're taking responsibility for the evils of I, 2020 That's i take full like. blame i take full blame <laughs> and i will be going to out. <laughs> I, will, <laughs> I will be going to bed early tonight everyone just so you know all right okay so now we're gonna we're gonna see the dynamic shift back to where things uh should be it's, <laughs> it's, it's what we can all expect in the, uh, in the upcoming upcoming months and weeks and whatever yes nice yeah so w w did you start off on guitar playing guitars before you were interested in building and luthering and all that yeah, you know, I started playing when I was around eight or so and um, got my first electric around 12. And, you know, all of the uh, the guitar players that I liked, they all had custom guitars. And uh, in the growing up as a teenager in the mid 80s, um, people weren't really uh, people were playing different styles of, you know, different guitars that were that were custom. They weren't off the rack. They weren't what your dad was playing and they were cool colors and graphics. And um, so that was kind of the culture that I grew up in. And then there was a, a, a music store nearby where I lived at the time in Lombard um, called Park Avenue Music and they're still there. And, uh, I, you know, I used to hang out there um, like a stray cat and, uh, you know, they had all of the guitars that I just loved. You know, they had Jackson's and Charvel's and, um, and and then you know big huge laney stacks i remember you know the first day that you know, they, they took delivery of like these laney um aor 50 you know half stacks and they're just walking into the place and it was just the loudest most fun this day um <laughs> but uh steve the owner he also made parts guitars and um you know a lot of the kids that i went to high school with it that also played guitar they had parts guitars made by made by steve and so 
as like a 16th birthday gift to myself, I had him make me one. Um, and you know, he was just making part strats and I still have it. I'm looking at it right now. And, um, you know, I would watch him do repair work and, okay. and, and, you know, I kind of ask questions, but you know, it was more just kind of like trying to hang out, you know, it was, it was the cool place to, to hang out and, sure. and getting to watch that stuff and kind of ask questions. And, you know, um, it was nice because, you know, Steve would always just answer and just kind of talk about what he was doing. Like I had an, a, a, a clue about what he was talking about, which I didn't, but you know, was, he's kind of absorbed that stuff. And so I, I eventually started working on my own stuff and working on my friend's stuff and then building my own parts, guitars and gosh, maybe 2001 or so. And then eventually moving to building guitars from scratch and, um, and then, you know, moving to doing it full time. And, um, you know, here we are. Wow. What about the early days? I mean, starting, starting like your own guitar company had to be so challenging and so many things you had to do right i mean well yes um i would say every day it's pretty much you know uh it, it's a challenge because there's especially you know a, a lot of um the following that i've been able to create and um that, that all kind of came from you know the internet forums in the early 2000s um to, you know, eventually social media and that sort of thing. And now with social media being as huge as it is, and, you know, it's been like this for a long time, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a daily fight to gain traction into someone's newsfeed. And, I, you know, yeah. I get it that you might get sick of seeing an ad, but um, <laughs> kids, sometimes that's the only way I can reach you. And granted, I don't really advertise as much as I should, but, um, you know, it is, it, I'm always on, I'm always available. Uh, and it's, it, uh, it is, you know, it, it, starting out, you know, there, there, there isn't really, there are a few moments and a few time periods where I think of like, this was kind of the beginning of, of things, but, you know, uh, on a much larger kind of, um, existential scale, you know, like selling guitars has always been a thing. Like since I was, since I was 12 and I got my first electric, um, I, I remember with a, with a Sharpie, I wrote on the headstock, a Sully custom. So it was like, it was always a thing. Um, so at least the nice thing is that when I decided to do this, uh, I had the name taken care of. So <laughs> that's right. one less thing I'd, I, I'd worry about, but you know, um, it, it happened very organically, especially with, you know, being active in various guitar forums at the time. Um, you know, you're working on projects and it's, you know, there's, there, there are millions of forums like this and especially, you know, like Facebook groups and that sort of thing of people just kind of posting, here's what I'm working on. And, and you kind of talk, uh, you know, uh, with like-minded folks about that sort of thing. And eventually you probably will catch the eye of someone who might like what you're doing and get in touch and, and uh, you know, and then it's like, oh, geez. So now somebody's interested in doing this uh, or you know, in purchasing one of these things. Um, and then there's that whole other thing that, okay, so now, you know, it, it kind of goes to another level of, um, you know, you might think you're doing a great job with what you're doing and you might be, um, but now, you know, uh, you, you've got a, you know, someone's putting money into that and you don't know this person. And so it's, yeah. you know, there's a, an extra level of like, you better make sure you know what you're talking about <laughs> and, and what you're doing. And, um, you know, I, I think the, the best piece of advice I can offer to someone, and I know we haven't asked, but um, it, don't, don't get halfway through your first guitar project and then start a guitar company. Just, just don't do that. There's not a rush. <laughs> um, and and I, I know that there is, um, there is an allure of this kind of a job. Um, it's kind of an exotic thing. And people say, oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I build guitars. Oh, well, you're some sort of master craftsman or whatever. And, and, you know, uh, there is some of that, but, uh, you know, it's mostly sanding. Um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> it, you know, it just, just, uh, you know, uh, get good at what you're doing and, and, uh, you know, things kind of will work out, but yeah, it's, it's always been, um, you know, deciding to, you know, step out, uh, uh you know, on the cold floor and say, I will take care of my, my own self. Um, that's, uh, it, it, it can be quite a different thing, especially if you don't come from a background of, uh, self-employment, which I did not. 
So right. <laughs> I was used to it. You know, I was used to direct deposit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when I, when I, like the first, uh, the, the first couple of months that I was doing this full time, you know, um, like, all right, cool. It's the 15th. There should be, you know, all right, cool. Uh, there should be some money coming in. And then I'm like, <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's not the, the money is there. It's just in the garage and you have to, you know, cut off the pieces that don't look like a guitar in order for that to become the money that you need to get. So right. um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a shift. Yeah. And guitars, um, you know, you could, you could make the best, you know, perfect, most perfect guitar ever. And someone could pick it up and just be like, eh, I don't like it, you know, cause there's so much personal, you know, Guitars are mm -hmm. so personal to people, you know, and if it just doesn't sure. feel right to them, it doesn't feel right. But um, what, yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so it's uh, and you being a musician, you mm -hmm. know, being able to play your own guitars, I'm sure you're able to be like, all right, these things are pretty rocking, you know, even from the beginning. Well, yeah, um, you know, but it, it's also you know, it's very subjective. I like what you're saying. Right. You, yeah. you, you said it's very subjective. And yeah. um a friend had, had said, you know, this is very much like making soup. There's a lot of us that are out there just making soup and we're all using the same basic ingredients, but you might uh, use a little more of this and a little less of that. And, and you know, everybody's soup is a little different. Um, and, you know, my, the, the, the guitars that I enjoy playing um, aren't necessarily what most people uh, really well not that's not necessarily true but like uh, let's just I'll, I'll just say if you give me if you hand me a last paul i don't want to play it um right. i and and i i've never and there's nothing there's nothing wrong with them yeah uh, and this is not any kind of like a, oh well, these guys are terrible they don't know if they're, eh, whatever um it's just that it's just not for me right. um there, there are issues that i had with the neck shape or a scale length and um same thing with fenders um you know everybody everybody digs a strat um, but I, you know, at the time when, you know, my formative years of, of when I was figuring out what kind of guitars I liked, um, Fender wasn't making those kinds of guitars and they, the, the necks were big and clunky and well, for me, um, and the fretboard radiuses were very, uh, very severe. So, you know, you, you bend something and it chokes out and, and uh, I just wanted something that could kind of get out of my way. And it's not to say that I was uh, some, you know, the next great shredder or anything like that. And, you know, ingbe has got a Fender Strat and granted it's heavily modded and it, it right. seems to get out of his way, but you know, it's, it's kind of what you pick up in your formative years, um, informs what you do later. So, um, a lot of where, uh, you know, the Sally guitars DNA comes from, um, a, a lot of the, the, the feel and playability of, you know, Jackson Charvel in the early mid, you know, eighties or so. And, um, you know, they're still making fantastic guitars and I've been fortunate enough to, you know, uh, consider Grover Jackson as a, a pretty much family. Um, but that, that's really kind of the, the area that I exist in. So, you know, um, usually, you know, you, you design guitars kind of, you know, the way that you like them and, you know, you kind of attract, you kind of attract your crowd. So, I don't, I don't get a lot of folk guys coming up and, and asking about a Raven, but um, I'm happy to build someone that's into folk a Raven, uh, just, hey. you know, <laughs> so get in touch. Well, what, um, what was your first guitar that you designed that actually came to be? Do you, do you remember? Um, <laughs> well, the, the, the first, like the, the one I started making just parts guitars um in okay. in like 2000 so those were just based on like you know super strap kind of things things that were like readily available so um you know it kind of went from that but uh, a, a shape that i was um more drawn to uh were the jackson firebirds that robin crosby from rat played um and one of the things that I liked about those guitars is that, and the same thing, you know, with, with Nikki six and he played, you know, Thunderbird basses from various manufacturers over the years. And the things <clears throat> that I liked about that shape is that they were, they, they seemed to be suited for um, a larger human. And I'm not the tallest person in the world, but you know, I'm, I'm not the shortest person in the world. And there are certain guitars that look real small on me. Um, whereas something like that, 
you know, um, like the, like that Firebird style, it, it's a it's a big guitar, and yeah. that seemed to be a little bit more proportionate for for my height, and it was also um, something different. And you know, uh, while I was really into that Firebird shape, I, I don't like Gibson Firebirds because it was. And again, this is not going to be like a here. Let me just trash guitar companies because it's <laughs> it's not. It's just that that's what spoke to me. It's like Jackson's version of it was different. It's a different body shape. It joins the 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 body joins the neck at a different fret. The head stock's obviously different. And I, you know, they don't, you know, they balance much better. And and anyway, so I I liked that, and that that's what I was kind of drawn to. So. Um, a lot of the early, um, a lot of the real early Sully guitars that I completed, like like the first six or so, most of them had that shape, which later became uh, the the Raven. Um, and then, you know, but but the the most uh, the most Sully Sully design I would have to say is the seventy one, which is um, it's a single cut and it was. Uh, you know, I kind of hate to go back, keep going back to this, but like, I always wanted a Les Paul when I was a little kid because Ace Frehley. That's why I wanted to play guitar, yeah. and and I had a few of them. And um, for whatever reason, and this is not a quality issue, just like what you're talking before, um, you pick up a guitar and it either speaks to you or it doesn't. Yeah. And the ones that I had, um, I had a really cool, like I had a, a black '73 custom. I'm like, that's. Like, like, you know, that's pretty dope. Um, but uh, as I pull the camera out of the way, um, you know, but the one that I had I'm just like, it was like, it just didn't, it just, we didn't, we didn't talk to each other. And um, I decided that I was going to find like a, a basket case Les Paul project on eBay. And gosh, this was probably 2006 or 2007 or so. And uh, I would, you know, fix it up and then kind of customize it to how I would want it. And I, I did that. And uh, at the time, um, you know, I, I kind of documented the whole process and, and you know, put it on YouTube. Um, I think those videos are all gone now, but uh, it kind of led to a, a Sully's Guitar Garage uh, YouTube channel that I, I don't do anymore. But uh, it, was, it was fun to document the process. But when the guitar was finished, I'm like, all right, here we go. And I played it. I'm like, yeah, it's all right, but it just isn't. And then I realized that it was a scale length. And going back to, uh, you know, uh, I, I grew up with guitars that were 25 and a half scale. And that's kind of what felt comfortable to me. Um, again, I'm also not the smallest person in the world. And, you know, I'm 6'3", I'm so I'm not like, you know, I'm not dunking in the NBA, but you know, uh, there are certain cars that I don't want to ride in. <laughs> hey, same, same here. I'm, I'm a six, I'm six, three also, man. So, all right. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, and the thing that I noticed with short scale guitars for me is that past like the 10th fret or so it tends to feel a little congested. Um, so I, okay. So the first thing was like, all right. So then I just started drawing. Um, I wanted to have something that was a single cut that didn't that, you know, that, that may be clear that, yeah, well, I think any electric guitar that is a single cut gets its foundation from, um, from a Les Paul one way or the other. But I also didn't want it to, I, I didn't want to do what it seemed to me that a lot of companies and builders did was just basically make a Les Paul shape um, or change it ever so slightly, but use the same control layout and put the toggle switch in the same place and use the same pick guard and, and maybe change the headstock to like a generic version of that open book design um, to where it might be someone's own kind of creation. But if somebody looks at it, they're going to call it a Les Paul. Um, right. I didn't want, I didn't want that uh, for a few reasons. Um, and so I spent about four years on that design, just kind of making tweaks and just letting it breathe and coming back to it over, over time. And then, uh, I got sick of drawing and, you know, you got to make a, you got to take it to the next step and, and make a physical thing and make templates and then make the actual guitar. And, and it's, it, it takes me about, about five, uh, I got to make about five of a new model before I really kind of decide what it really is. Um, and, you know, I, I, th I find that I, I tend to just kind of do something and refine as I go, kind of like with talking. I'm just I'm just blabbing and then I'll refine as I go and I'll eventually get <laughs> to a point if I haven't put everyone to sleep yet. But the, the 71, I think, is probably the most distinctive Sully 
guitar design. Um, and then if there was, you know, if, if that was the only, if I could only make one model, that would be it. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, so I hope that answered some question that yeah. was asked about a half an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that the one that, um, Stevie D is using from Buck Cherry, the 71? Yeah, Stevie, yeah, Stevie's got, um, Stevie has two 71 Trellas, which is the, which is kind of our flagship model. And that's the, uh, it's got a carved top on it. One has, um, a, a, a take on the Chicago flag. And then the other one is like a transparent white. And then uh, Stevie had, uh, we did a, a batch of um, a signature model for him within the Conspiracy series, which is uh, our, the, our Korean production line. Um, so I, I have the customs that I build here and then we have you know, the, a Korean production line. And uh, we did a version of a 71 for him in that, um, in, in that series. And so that one, it just has a flat top with a bevel and it's um, it's flat black, and then it has the the Chicago flag stars and stripes that's done in gloss black. So yeah. um, you can see that you can see that guitar in the video, um, the Buck Cherry video where they covered head like a hole from Nine Inch Nails. Um, he's okay. playing that guitar, and that was the seventy one SD. Um, since Stevie, you know, when when I was connected with Stevie. Um, doing a little research, I learned that uh, he was originally from the Chicago area, as am I. And um, so I figured that, I'm like, oh, hey, well, here's a theme. Uh, I had made some guitars uh, for myself that had um, Chicago flag graphics on them, and I would just call them my homesick guitar. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, I, I showed it to him, he's like, oh, that's really cool. Um, but maybe, you know, let's change the colors. And, and I totally like that idea because um, it's a cool enough design that it stands up on its own that if yeah. you don't know, uh, it's just a cool design. And then if you do know, then it's, you know, you got a little extra, but yeah, that's Stevie's got 70 ones. Um, yes, yes, he does. Yeah. Yeah. Stevie. Um, yeah. From Chicago, my, my brother, uh, older brother, Keith was in a band with Stevie, um, called Velvet Jones. I don't know if. Oh, if sure. You, yeah. I, I remember the name. Yeah. You remember that? Okay. Yeah. He was a drummer I, I and, uh, nice. Yeah, I was able, so I, I used to hang out with Velvet Jones, so I, you know, hung with Stevie and all that, and you know, nice. I'm going to yeah, eventually get the nerve to ask him to be on my show. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he would. I know he's busy, but um, I think he oh. said he would, but he just hasn't got back yet, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, the, the thing that I found is uh, if, if, <laughs> if you ask somebody and just like, uh, hey, how about... Uh, do you have any time this or next week? And then, or and like, like what you do them? Like I, I could do something this week. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure he will. He's done, you know, he's done some podcasts before and, and uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a pretty gracious guy. So I'm sure, you know, since yeah. you, you guys know each other, I'm sure you'll figure something out. Yeah. I just saw him on Mitch LaFon. So I'm going to give him mm -hmm. at least, at least a couple of weeks <laughs> to be mm -hmm. inter interview free, I think. Sure. And and my brother, sure. my brother, uh, he sent me Striper's new music video. And, oh yeah! And I was watching it, and I had no idea that Michael Sweet was playing a, a Sully. And I was just, I, I, I it looked familiar. I, I could see the headstock, and I was just watching. I'm like, that's gotta be. And you know, I was just the whole video. It I was is. just trying to find yeah. a guitar, and sure enough, you built that for Michael Sweet, I huh? Did, I, I did. Yeah. And the, the thing that I learned, you know, um, uh, one of the things that uh, I, I do with customs is that the, uh, the logos on the headstocks are, are chrome. Um, and, you know, looks, it offers a nice presentation. Uh, yeah. but, but the thing that I, the thing that I noticed in the video is like the, the way that it was, it was kind of lit that like, you had just have to catch it at just the right angle and it's so i should have made it uh i should have made that a solid color <laughs> but uh you know you, you, it's that's one of the other things kids is you, you have to have um a, a distinctive design or at least a logo that can be seen from space so yeah. or both yeah or both. but yeah that was um uh, i built that that revolution um v for michael and uh we are working on um 
you know, we, we've always planned to do, uh, I, I make him that guitar and a couple more, and then we'll do like signature versions of those guitars. Um, and we'll kind of spread them. Uh, some will be done as, as customs, uh, and then we'll do, uh, you know, a conspiracy series version. So, um, COVID being COVID and 2020 being 2020, uh, that is really, um, the, the, factory that I use that builds the conspiracy series guitars. Um, you know, I mean, the entire world has had all kinds of production delays and, yeah. uh, that's definitely been part of it. So, um, I should have had it by now, but, um, we're still working on it and, uh, I should hopefully have the prototype, um, within hopefully the next month, but you know, the, the custom version, I already know what that looks like. Cause you know, I've, I've built it. So, uh, yeah. that's, 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 uh, that's that. So we'll figure out some stuff and, and we'll get it, uh, communicated out to the people so they can get one for themselves. Very heck soon. Yeah. Heck yeah. Any, uh, yeah. other, other, um, like kind of bigger names that you're building guitars for right now or anything in the world? Um, well, well, I, I, I work with, um, Wednesday 13 and his guitar player, Roman. Um, mm-hmm. they, they, they've got some of, uh, like Roman plays my stuff um, and they're gonna be recording a new record. So that'll have some silly stuff on there. Um, there is a bass that I am finishing um, right now that I, I don't know if it's okay to talk about. I don't know that it's not okay to talk about, um, but uh, it's, I mean, it's not, you know, um, it's not someone that's contractually obligated to another manufacturer, but you know, I would like to let, let that person get that guitar and or get that uh, bass rather and, and share that themselves before I say anything. Um, yeah. You know, uh, there's the, the, the one thing, you know, and, and the, the people that I've worked with, you know, like, like Stevie and um, Michael Sweet and, and uh, you know, other people, a lot of it stemmed from a guitar that I built a few years ago for Nikki Six and Motley Crue. And, um, you know, he introduced me, you know, he connected me to Stevie and then, you know, Stevie spent the next couple of years playing my guitars on tour. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, they, they, it kind of raises your, it raises the awareness of you to, uh, you know, kind of people that are in touring, uh, in touring bands and that sort of thing. But, you know, uh, I also, while, while it's fun to, um, to work with, uh, you know, uh, I guess a more high profile clientele, uh, I still have plenty of, uh, plenty of guitars to build for, for people who are not necessarily enjoying right. such a high profile, uh, either because they're, you know, they're not in the touring band or whatever, but you know, it's a, uh, it's a nice balance is I think what yeah. I'm trying to say, <laughs> yeah, great. but it's all, I mean, it's, it all helps, you know, kind of get yourself out there to other people. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I'm excited that you're, you're making basses now because I'm a bass player. Um, how long, oh, okay. have, how long have you been doing that? Uh, you know, I, I, I think I started making, I think I did one in like 2014, 2015. Um, uh, I, I started making like a couple, um, but it's, you know, basses are kind of one of those things where, um, it's almost like making a banjo for me, uh, in that there really hasn't been a time. I mean, I, I, I've played basses before, but there's not a time when I pick one up and I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's do something. This is, this is what I need. This is, this is it. This yeah. is it. So, um, so it's been a little bit of, uh, reticence or, 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 you know, to make them, or it's just one of those things that like, yeah, I'll make them. Uh, but I don't really, um, I don't really promote it. And, you know, I, I try and kind of manage people's expectations, you know, like, Oh, I want like a five string with a walnut purple heart neck and all this, stuff, <laughs> all this active, you know, whatever, uh, it, you know, I'm like, that's, that's cool. And there's nothing wrong with wanting that. I don't know that I'm your guy for that, but, um, you know, I, so I, I made a couple of few years ago and then, um, I was contacted by, the wife of a high school friend um and it was going to be their uh a, a, a 20th or 25th wedding anniversary and uh he plays bass and she wanted to commission uh, a bass and I'm like well what do you think you'd like she's like i don't know 
whatever you want. Just make something cool. I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. But, you know, no pressure. But but also, uh, it was nice in that um, I thought that the Stardust model uh, would make a really cool base. Um, and I, I granted I'm biased, but I think, I think I'm right. <laughs> and so I, I, I sent her a picture of like, oh, we can make like this model, but like as a base and like maybe this particular inlay and, you know, we do a lot of sparkle finishes. And so she's just like, yeah, you know, if you want to do that, um, that sounds great. Just go ahead. So I got to work and, um, the, you know, just made the Stardust base. And th the one thing that I, I came across quickly uh, in making bases is that a lot of the pickups from different manufacturers, they're not made to the same size and specs. Wow. Um, so you may have, uh, you may have a routing template for like a P base pickup. Um, but like it, like the corners are too round. So actually like getting the thing in there, it's, it's, you know, it doesn't quite fit. And, and anyway, so uh, it's, it's one of those things, kids, that when you're about to make something that you've never made before, make sure you've got all of the parts there so you can, you know, kind of, you know, do this thing. You have all the parts there first. And so you're not having to mod something, um, you know, to, to fit something later. But the bases, I, I, am, I am definitely getting uh, far more comfortable with. And uh, I'm this one that I'm uh, finishing up, it has neck specs that I think is a little bit more uh, along, it, like it feels a little bit better for me. Um, it's got a narrower nut width and the neck itself is a little thinner. Um, so okay. that I'm like, oh, okay, I can, I can play this. And then, you know, I, there was a, a Raven bass that I had finished um, in, in November. Um, that uh, I did this uh, a video uh, with with some friends at a, a YouTube show called Couch Riffs, and they uh, you get a bunch of musicians and you know you play a song. And initially, before COVID hits, all of these musicians were on a couch, and you do it in one take. You screw it up, you screw it up. That's what we <laughs> go with. Um, and and I did one with them at, at Nam in January on on a couch, and we played uh, twice in the attic, and it was fun. Um, but we wanted to do a Christmas thing. And, uh, so we, we had to, you know, we had to record our parts separately and, uh, it turns out that, uh, I wound up playing bass. And so I kind of, you know, I had to learn this Ramon song and, you know, that's a, that's a good song, you know, good kind of skill level if you're not really a bass player. And, um, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm playing this Raven bass in the garage with Christmas lights and stuff. And I'm like, all right, yeah, no, I'm, I'm getting kind of used to this and I'm getting a little bit more accustomed to it. So, uh, the really short answer to a real long rambling answer is, uh, <laughs> yes, more bases will be happening. Um, I, I really like how the Stardust bass turned out and I would like to do more of them. Um, Raven bases are obviously, uh, have been, it's not, maybe not obviously, but they've been popular. And so I imagine that uh, there may be a Raven base in the conspiracy series um, because I get not everybody is, you know, really, not, you know, custom guitars, um, they're expensive. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and I, and I get it. So um, I would like to, you know, put a, 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 like put a Raven base and a Stardust base in, in the conspiracy series. Um, I think that would be cool. Yeah, I saw, I think it was um, Conspiracy Series. It looked like a 71. It was seafoam green with um, white and black pickups that you had on your website mm -hmm. like a long time ago, or maybe it was Facebook. But I saw that guitar and I was like, oh my God, that is so me. <laughs> I I'm can't remember. Think of, well, it was... If it was if it was seafoam, I haven't done a, I haven't done a seventy one in seafoam green, but oh, okay, not seventy one then. It must have been. It could have been a stardust, which is based on a seventy one, which is like a it's like an offset shape. And there was uh, there was okay. one that was kind of like a seafoam green, had a white pick guard with white pickups, yeah. And I think a maple neck that was uh, actually yeah. at um, that was available for sale at Park Avenue Guitars in Lombard. So someone local has it. <laughs> I, I wanted that man. That was yeah. Uh, yeah gorgeous guitar. yeah Star stardust are, stardust are cool um it, it was kind of like i took we wanted to take a 71 and kind of meld it into kind of like an offset in in an attempt to kind of reach out to 
uh, fans of like offset guitar designs like jazz masters without actually having to like make like a jazz master because it's not really my aesthetically it doesn't really go with what I do and um, it turned out to be a, a cool kind of Jetsons retro futuristic looking kind of thing that also has its own you know kind of kind of vibe as well so yeah I I, I dig Stardust they're, they're pretty cool yeah definitely I'll give you and I'm uh, glad you liked it too oh yeah Let's give your voice a break here, uh, just for a second, <laughs> if you don't, if you, if you don't mind. So, how about you shut up for a minute? <laughs> no, 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 no. Problem. I just, I have some uh, shout outs to read for some people that have subscribed uh, to my channel on YouTube and elsewhere. So, if you don't mind, Sully, I'll just go through that real quick. Absolutely. Uh, thanks, Adele King, Kevin Hody or Hote. I'm not really sure. Vel, Vel, just, Vel has just one name, like Bono. Uh, Hazel A, Sean Niehoff, Jason G, Kimberly S, Fred D, Drew P, Connie L, TJ, Sean O, Willie V, uh, John Menick, Dixie Lynn, Tina Marie Kelly. You're the best. Uh, Mike from Them Sons of Bitches. That's a band. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Adam Epini. Sorry, bro. Probably just butchered your name. Michael Bailey, Jennifer Rock. Connor Parker and Timothy B. Thank you guys all so much. And anyone listening, I'll never ask you for money, but if you could hit that subscribe button, I really appreciate it. There, your voice feel a little better. <laughs> Get some water <laughs> yeah. in there. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> good. Um, plans for 21, 2021, just kind of keep on rolling, doing what you're doing or and, he, and I, can, I, I can make this one short. Um, we'll get the Michael <laughs> Sweet thing out. Uh, you know, uh, my, my goal is to get the Michael Sweet thing out. Um, we're going to do some more bases. Um, some more with like the 622s, which is like their little kind of strat thing. I've got one here. Um, but it doesn't have a clunky neck heel. Ah. Um, and uh, we'll do some more of those. I, I, that's been something that's it was very resistant to, but uh, 2020 being 2020, I said, you know, what the hell, try it. And I decided to do it a little bit different. Um, so I make them in batches uh, and uh, they're, they're priced between the conspiracy series and our customs. So that means there's limited options, but um, there's still a fair amount of options for people to kind of spec them out for, you know, to, to their own um, aesthetic tastes. Uh, yeah, so more bases. 622s. Um, I, I have a couple of ideas with some models that I haven't really finished yet, um, but the woodwork is mostly done. So um, we'll, we'll probably see some changes to some of the product line. Um, a couple of them, well, one of the models is going to get a bit of a facelift. Um, there's a couple of, uh, we'll be getting into the pickup business. Um, and, and, you know, Sally pickups are going to be a thing and oh, um nice. yeah yeah i think so too and um i i, I think that's about all i can I, I can't really share a whole ton about it just yet but um you know uh excited about it i've always you know one of the first repairs i did or one of the first you know bits of modification i did was uh, was a pickup swap when i was 15 and um i don't know why but you know pickups have always just been kind of near and dear to me so um, there are a few recipes that I've been using over the years that, uh, that, that work well for what I do. And so we will make them available to the people. And I'm very excited <laughs> about that. Could I, could I see that guitar again you got right in front of you? Oh yeah, sure. Um, so this is a, this is a 622. This is a, um, you know, so it's basically uh -huh. a you know, Strat style, except for the, your upper fret axis is better. The cutaways are deeper. Um, and the heel is yeah. sculpted and I don't use a neck plate and you can see there's contours, uh, like inside the cutaways. Now, um, this That's... one has a roasted, uh, it's got a roasted maple neck and, wow. uh, a flame, uh, roasted ma flame maple fretboard. Gorgeous. And uh, you can see the back of the neck. And so the thing that I like about roasted maple is that. Yeah, it still smells like maple syrup. Um, oh, wow. It's, uh, it's, it's baked, and uh, that process, you know, kind of crystallizes things and, and 
when I get a shipment of it, I, I open it up and it, it smells like maple syrup. And so it's, <laughs> it's actually uh, one of the times when, when sanding is actually a pleasant experience. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. And the, you know, roasted maple's cool. I like it. Uh, it's a nice feel. You don't have to put a finish on it. Um, just a little bit of oil. It's, it's more stable. It's a little lighter. Um, and uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. That, I'm glad you know, with that guitar, um, the strats and I never, sure. I never even noticed this until my buddy pointed it out to me, but the, the volume knob right here, where oh, uh -huh. the, the placement, where they put of, it. it's, I, I don't know why they ever did that because once he pointed it out to me, now I can't play this thing without that. Uh, volume knob getting Without in my it. way so, yeah. somehow and I just happened to notice you you didn't you know put yours there so. yeah <laughs> it's uh it's in a different spot um, yeah you know I, I the the my my part strat that I had you know commissioned when I was 16 I mean that was my main guitar and that had a traditional um it had a traditional fender control layout um I never had a problem with it uh, it, and, and it wasn't to, like, like a friend of mine also had a strat and he's like, God, I just hate that having that volume knob there. Really? And, and I don't know if it's, um, just, I guess the way I pick or whatever, it, it never really got in the way, but, but volume knob placement and control layout is definitely one of those things, um, that, you know, we talked earlier about, uh, things that are very subjective and, yeah. um, you know, sometimes it's, sometimes it's tough to kind of get something laid out in the space that you have to put it all in yeah. uh, to also be in a manner that, you know, that kind of works for the most amount of people. But yeah, that, that you're uh, many, many, many people feel your pain. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Very subjective thing with guitars. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Like there's really, there's, it's really hard to find a perfect guitar where you want you know, everything unless of course you're making it yourself <laughs> um, well you know e e even then <laughs> <laughs> you know i mean e well but that's you know that's kind of like why you make prototypes and that's um but yeah i mean there you know there there is no such thing as, as a perfect guitar you just find out in, in, in the instrument itself by its own nature is not a perfect instrument especially when it comes to tuning and stuff like that right. but you know uh at, at the end of the day, um, it's, uh, you find what works for you and, and you do the best you can by God. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, John, give us uh, your, your websites and sure. Yeah. You can just go Sully guitars, S U L L Y guitars, G U I T A R S Facebook, uh, at Sully guitars on Instagram and at Sully guitars on Twitter. Um, um, on TikTok, I don't do much on TikTok, but uh, I mostly just look at cat videos and like those. <laughs> um, but you know, there's a, there are some things on the Sully Guitars TikTok, so um, you kind of uh, I'm I'm pretty easy to find. So I, I'll leave so, all so, the so come find me. I'll leave all those links in the description. Sure, much Thank, appreciated. Thanks so much for coming on, man. This is great. I I love talking guitars, and uh, I had a lot of fun, and hopefully. Uh, Okay. Come back next year a little and we'll do it again. And so like Tuesday then? <laughs> oh God, guys, it's a New Year's Eve show. Good Sorry. Luck. Yeah, no, that would be uh that would be fine. And thank you for having me and uh and and uh you know happy new year to you and all of your listeners, damn it. Yeah, happy new year, man. <laughs> See you too.